Hi, my name is Jill Warner and I've been a teacher for 18 years. I've taught kindergarten and first grade. I followed after my mother who taught 35 years in first grade. I'm not sure how she did it, but she did. Still smiling. Um, now though, I'm in a different position and I'm working with admin and I'm actually coaching teachers. Um, and so I have this opportunity to share some ideas on how um, the K through two and three through five lessons can go um, and some options to give you on um, ways to deliver it. So we know that it's always in the delivery and how excited you are is gonna be how excited the students are. So I'm gonna actually go through this as if um, you're the, the students, but there's gonna be times where I'm gonna be talking to you like a teacher as well. So I know you'll follow along with me because you're used to that multitasking. Okay, so we're gonna start taking a peek at the K through second grade um, lesson for the, the faux stained glass. However, I'm gonna be implementing the third through fifth ideas as well. And that's because the way this lesson is designed, those first two steps mimic each other um, between the K through two moxie box and the third through fifth moxie box. And I don't want to exclude our special ed teachers. You guys are amazing and thank you for being here. And also TK, a it's a different world down there and I bow down to all TK teachers. Okay, so before we be begin any lesson, as you know, we like to give that whole anticipatory set, right? Let's get them excited, but we also have to front load them. And so for this particular um, lesson, the front load is gonna be really simple and it can be really short because it's more of vis a visual. It's more images and a visual than anything else. For the olders though, you guys have this opportunity to go into a wide array of history and background of stained glass um, windows. And in fact, at the very end, I'm gonna give you some ideas for thematic teaching. I don't know how many of you do thematic teaching, um, but I know I did in the classroom and I loved that whole concept of bringing my subject material together and spreading it out amongst all the curricular. So I'm hoping that that is helpful as well. Okay, so let's get started first with how can we introduce this and what are some ideas on how we can introduce this? And it can happen the same way for a K through two class and a three through five class. Okay, so Boys and girls, look, this is beautiful, isn't it? Would you believe if I told you that this is glass? It's called stained glass. And what happens is the sunlight, and we're gonna learn a lot about sunlight throughout this lesson, shines through the stained glass, and this is what you see from the other side. And you can tell that there's a lot going on in here, but it's telling a story. I don't know the story of this one. I can think of maybe, I don't know, um, Max and the wild things. Maybe that's Max's ship. There's lots of different stories that we can come up with with this, but there actually is a story behind each stained glass. This is another one. It's one of my favorite ones because I can imagine standing there in the middle of this building and looking up and I'm seeing all of this above my head and look at how that light is shining through. You can really tell through that little middle section there. Here's another example of stained glass. This is really cool, because this is now, you are standing on an outside of a building and that light is coming from within that building. And, and that's what you're seeing, you're seeing from the outside. So it's just as beautiful outside as it is inside. Here's the funny thing though about stained glass windows. Stained glass windows really aren't about letting the light go through to brighten up the room. It's letting the light go through to see all the different colors and the designs. And like I told you, they tell a story, right? And so with that being said, looking through this from the other side or seeing this from the other side, you might not know exactly what the story is yet, but you can still appreciate the beauty of it. Okay, so that was stained glass. This is not, in fact, we're actually going to be creating this. These are called sun catchers. So we're going to be using the stained glass. It's called faux stained glass because it's an imitation of stained glass. Okay, I'm not going to let you use glass in here. Why do you think we wouldn't use glass? It could break. It's dangerous. 
right? We could get cut. So we're not going to use the glass, but we're going to do something called faux stained glass. And all faux is, is it's imitation. It's like when with the older students, when you were little, you had, you know, a baby doll and you pretended that that was real. You were like imitating a real baby, holding a real baby. And, and boys and girls, and I know this in my own neighborhood, you guys all have those little Jeeps and those trucks that you ride around in. Well, again, you're really not driving a real Jeep because that would be like against the law. Um, but you're riding a pretend Jeep or it's an imitation Jeep. It looks like a Jeep, but it's not a real Jeep. That's kind of what faux means. So faux in this case is we're making faux stained glass so we're making real sun catchers but it's going to be with make believe make believe stained glass okay i bet you're excited and ready to get started right all right now for teachers before we even want to talk about um or start this lesson we, they've got to understand that sunlight is a big part of a sun catcher right it gets, you, you can cling it to a window and then they can see their design shine through, right? So we wanna be sure that we're giving them that science, that science background too for the sunlight because without the sunlight, we wouldn't have sun catchers. So he, this is my favorite one. I mean, Dr. DeMeo, you probably use it too in the classroom. They're about eight minutes long or so. And I love them because he's funny, um, but it's, it's kind of like that magic school bus where they, they're thinking that they're watching a story, but they're really learning a lot about science, yeah? So this is the same sort of thing. This is um, Dr. DeMeo. I'm gonna just play just a little bit of it. But me, technically I'm about 70% hydrogen. Oh, I could totally relate, man. You see, my dad is 50% hydrogen. Yeah, his mom was born in Italy and she came over on a little baby boat. What? No, man, hydrogen is a gas and it makes up most of what I'm made of. You know what, Sonny? I had a bunch of more questions for you, but I wrote them all on a piece of paper and I actually dropped that piece of paper in a sewer. And then I went into the sewer and I had to fight a rat for it and the rat won. But I do remember one question and I think it's one we're all thinking. Well, go ahead, ask. Do you ever burn the roof of your mouth when you eat pizza? So the reason why I wanted to play a little bit of, the, of that video is for you to um, understand the methods to my madness, I guess you can say as a teacher. So I'm always thinking about what do I do while I'm trying to help prep the littles, okay? Because in the boxes there are supplies, right? Well, sometimes the littles can't um, uh, manipulate the supplies or can't get them ready. And so in this particular box, and by the way, third through fifth and K through two, the supplies are the same in the box. But one of the things that does have to be prepped are the markers. What I mean by being prepped is the last thing you want is for the kiddos to keep all the markers in the box, right? Because if they're gonna do that, what's gonna happen? They're gonna drive you nuts because they're having to pull out a green one and they wanna put it back and then they've got to pull out the red one and they've got to put it back, depending on how neat and organized um, those littles are, we're all different. So my suggestion is while that video is playing, you go around, first you have them lift the box, so the box is up for them, but they're not to touch anything in it. But then you go around, open up the boxes for them and empty out all the markers into the box, right? Take the box from them, you can save it because you might want to reorganize it later, but at least throughout this month long lesson, it, the markers can be loose in the box and you're, you're gonna save a lot of time. So that's kind of why I will throw out a video here and there because I'm thinking, what are they gonna do um, that is effective while I'm trying to help them prep? Now the olders, you don't have to do any of that because you know they're able to do that themselves. Okay, so you're gonna, I'm going back to the kids now. All right, everybody. So now, boys and girls, you're lifting your box up. And inside, the first thing you're going to find is what looks like brown paper. And you might be going, well, what's that for? Am I going to be drawing on that? What's happening? No. You know how Mrs. Warner likes things to be neat, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to protect our desk. So right now, I want you to open up, up 
your paper open it all the way so that you have a nice mat for your desk. And you can use your arms to even flatten it out if you need to. Okay, the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to take what we call the cling and you're gonna feel the difference. The difference is this is scrap paper. Feels like there's no plastic on it, but if you feel this one, this feels a little bit like plastic. It's shiny, right? Okay, well, what we need to do with this is we're gonna need to peel it off so that it's just clear. So this is how we're gonna do that. We've been practicing counting, right? We're gonna practice counting. Just like when you wait for glue to dry, we count to what? Right, 20. We're gonna count to 20. So this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna take this, and we're going to fold it back and forth. And while we fold one corner of it back and forth, we're gonna count to 20. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and all the way to 20, you're gonna count. Okay, once that's done, teachers, once that's done, you just are able to peel it. Otherwise, it's a little bit tricky, right? Okay, so we're gonna peel it. Now they have their cling. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you, as teachers, not as students, what the manual is gonna look like. So this is the K through second, um, the third through fifth. Like I said, what's inside is gonna be similar. Some of it's going to be a little bit different. I'll show you the differences, um, the three through five teachers, a little bit later. Okay, when you turn, you're gonna see that the material supplies are listed and then you have a little bit of a pacing guide because you know, um, the one thing that we would like for teachers to embrace is this idea, not to just get it done, okay? It, what, what we would love for you to embrace is that, you know, art happens across time, right? And we need to cultivate the arts and we need to cultivate the creativity in the students. And that can happen across time. So you really have an entire month to get this lesson done. Um, and we'd love for that to happen. We, would we want the kids to learn how to slow down and take their time. There's no urgency here with Moxie Box. So for the littles, another thing comes into play. As we talked about earlier, they're not going to be able to sit for an entire hour. At least my kids have never been able to sit for an entire hour. Um, 20 minutes was about, you know, a good, a good time to transition. And the other thing that I have, um, in my mind to make sure that I tell you is this, it might be a good idea. And this is whether you're three through five, K through two, special ed, um, TK, um, whatever you teach, it might be a good idea when you look through the steps to decide that, Hey, I think I really need to do a couple of these steps at the end of the day. And the reason why at the end of the day is because in this manual it asks you, it asks the students, okay, you're gonna have to wait a few minutes for the ink to dry before we color on the other side. Or you're gonna have to let the puff paint dry overnight. And so in my mind, I'm thinking about a classroom. Okay, if I'm doing it at the end of the day, a half hour before school gets out, an hour before, if I'm just gonna do one hour a week for the olders, I'm gonna do it at the end of the day so that it, the mat and the artwork can stay on their desk overnight. Um, and the, whether it's the markers or the puff paint, it can dry. So again, like there's no urgency and we can take our time um, doing these steps. But I just wanted to mention that to you because the last thing I want is for, you know, the kids start carrying over their little project to your drying rack and then it falls and oh my gosh, the puff paint is everywhere and their, their puff paint is now smashed and it's no, no longer a puff. Okay, so what you'll see here is we have step, uh, let's move it up. We have step one, right? Um, and that's what we're gonna start with here. So basically it's telling you that there are templates on page four and five for the students to use. I want you to think about step one and step two, if you will, as a practice. So we are practicing how to make the faux um, sun catcher. So the first two steps, consider it a practice. Steps three and four is a beautiful thing because then it is something that they're creating on their own, right? They're using their own brainstorm ideas um, to come up with some designs that they can do. So this is a practice round. 
And you can tell them that. No stress, we're practicing, and we're gonna do the real thing in a couple of weeks. On page four and five, you're gonna see that we've got choices of templates for you. And it looks like this for three, five, this for K2. Now on this for K2, you're gonna see, okay, okay, it's a little more simple, right? And here we have a little more details with it. Uh, the three through five, there's an extra step in it because you're also going to be working on a background. And, and the K2, we're not working on a background. We're taking little steps with the K2 kiddos. Okay, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do the K2 kiddos because my art talents are really just not like um, Amanda Cakes. So I'm gonna start with the easy ones. And this is how we're gonna go. We peeled this off, remember? We peeled this off. Hey, I'm gonna get my art mat back for you. And here's my cling. Now you can tell the kids, look, there's four designs here. I want you to choose the one that you like best. Which one do you like best? I'm gonna choose the top one. And this is a thing that, um, I've gotten a tip on this from both Amanda and Jim. There are times when we're doing these kinds of art projects where the kids ha have to have a lot of um, coordination. And in this particular one, it sounds simple. All we want them to do is we want them to choose markers, um, choose colors to color in the little shapes. The thing is, is that their hands are a lot littler than mine. Um, and it might be difficult for them to hold the cling and color at the same time. And we have found, when we've done this with seniors, that it was slipping. So one suggestion is to go ahead and tape it. Now the olders may not need this step. And for the olders, they can, they can rip off tape by themselves. But with the youngers, it takes them a little while to do something like that, right? So I suggest creating a um, countertop of tape already cut. And I've done that here already. So I would call the kids up by table group to go ahead and come up and get two pieces. That's really all they would need is two pieces. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna, they have their shape they chose, right? I'm just gonna tape one here and I'm gonna tape one to the paper. Okay, they might ask you, I need help, I need help. Up. Uh, what's the rule, you guys? Same rule as when we're eating snack and when we're doing work, ask three before me, right? Ask three before me. For the olders, this is just three through five, really important three through five. They need to take out several colors. I would say three to four colors and they're gonna place them aside. Why? Because those are gonna be the three to four colors that they're gonna use on their background. And we don't want the shape to be used with those same colors. So they're gonna choose three random colors or their three favorite colors, whatever they want. I'm gonna choose three of them okay so here we go with the um k through two three through five is going to do the same thing but i showed you it's just a more detailed um piece of art so i'm going to take a color and i'm going to show them and i'm going to do i'm going to model this it is going to be an i do you do but right now boys and girls you are not touching the marker you're watching so if you have a marker in your hand where is it going to go back in the box very good Okay, I'll wait if I have to, to make sure that they're not um, holding a marker. For my class, I had enough room for floor space and that's where I would pull them. I would say, come to the carpet, you're gonna come watch me first. That way they don't have that while they're going and they're gonna and, and touch it. For the older kids, they're gonna be able to sit there and just watch. Okay, why I'm doing this is a couple of reasons. Show them the marker and show them the tip. You know, hey, look, you guys, there's some rules you are not going to want to press really hard if you press really hard you're going to smash the tip and you're going to ruin it right we have to treat our art supplies really gentle so we don't want to do that we don't want to smash too hard and we also when you're trying to color just like with crayons how i show you with crayons when you're trying to color from the tip of the crayon it takes a lot longer so let's go from the side of the marker and you're going to see it goes a lot smoother but what i want you to do is i want you to make sure that you are covering the entire area i don't want to see any white areas so guess what we're going to go slow 
And guess what? It's going to take us time to do this. I'm using one color first. I chose blue. And they're going to tell me all their favorite colors as I'm using the color. That's their favorite. Am I taking my time, boys and girls? Am I rushing and going into the next shape? No. I am going to close my cap, right? Keep it closed so it doesn't get dry. Then I'm going to choose another color. Oh, Brooklyn, I know pink is your favorite, so I just chose Brooklyn's favorite color. And now I'm going to color in this particular shape. Okay, I'm going to keep going until this shape is completely done. For the olders, it's going to be the same process with their shape. They have only two patterns to choose from. They can choose one or the other, and they're going to do the exact same thing. They're also making a practice. Okay, so now the coloring part is done on one side of the clean. Remember earlier we talked about, hey, maybe the best time of day to do this would be at the end of the day or maybe before lunch because in we, we did the first part of it, which is one side of the cling. Now what needs to happen is the kids need to wait a few minutes for it to dry before they flip it over and do the exact same coloring on the other side. And I can see this right now that it's not completely dry. So if I were flipping it, then I'm afraid it's gonna smudge. We don't want that to happen. Same thing, look at what the third through fifth looks like, the older, right? We did the same thing. And you can see that there's some areas where it's not completely dry yet. We've got to wait a few minutes. They have more patience. Third through fifth can probably wait a few minutes, um, put the caps on their pens, you know, chat for a minute or two, and then they can go ahead and flip it over. Okay, so now that we're ready, we're going to go ahead and flip it over because we're going to want to do the other side as well. Okay, so we're going to flip it over. And remember, for my littles, this is either the next day, the next morning, or maybe, you know, a couple of days later, you're going to pull it up again for the afternoon. You know, maybe every other day you're going to do 20 minutes of it. For the older kids, they're good enough to wait, wait it out, and then they can flip it over. This is the littles. So you can flip it over directly onto the art mat. And what they're going to do is the exact same thing, right? They're going to take their same color, and they're basically going to trace back over right on the other side. So they're using the color that they already did as their little template and they're just going to color over again. They're going to do that with every single section and you're reminding them, you guys take your time. We want this to be really full of color, so take your time. Don't rush, we have no place to go right now. And you're gonna take the time and let them have that time to finish coloring. For the olders, theirs looked a little bit different, but you're gonna do the exact same thing, right? They're gonna take their template, they're gonna flip it over and they're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna take their time to color exactly using the same colors that they chose before. Remember, they did not wanna use their three colors that they pulled out. That's gonna be the next step. Once this is done, you have completed step one and we're gonna move on to step two. But you can see how we're doing the same process from K through two to three through five and the special ed as well as the TK. Okay, so we'll go ahead and give the kiddos a little bit of time to get that done. So now they just finished coloring both sides, right? So I wanna show you where you are in the manual. So for the TK through second, here you are, you're on um, page three, which is still step one, okay? But what they did was they just completed step one. The thing is on their template, let's take a look at their template. This is what we just finished coloring. Now both sides are done. You can see that the colors are so much more vibrant, right? Okay, so what we wanna do is we can take it off of the template now, but what you wanna be sure happens is that it goes back into their box, the template, because they're gonna need the template in a little while for step two. Same with the olders. Here we did, we finished coloring, right? And it's a lot more vibrant um, and it's fine to take it off, the thing is now we've got to make sure that we save this in their box. Okay, let's go back here. 
So this is K through two. You can see that this is what we've done. Now we're gonna be moving on to step two. Step two is where we're using puff paint. Now, before we start step two for K through two, let me show three through five. And I know it's confusing because I'm going back and forth, but I, I just want this time to um, be effective for everybody and efficient. Okay, so here is the three through five and three through five, same thing. This is page two. We just finished doing um, this part of step one and then we colored the other side as well, right? of step one. So here we are done with step one. For step two, it's a little bit different. You can see up top, we are now gonna start designing um, a background. So let me go ahead and show you how that's done. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go back to um, K through two and three through five, because again, that puff part is the same for both. Okay, so step two for the olders. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to go into the box and in the box, you're going to see that there, there is scrap paper. And it's just a plain white piece of paper. So you're gonna go ahead and have them grab the scrap paper. Okay, with the scrap paper, um, what Miss Amanda is having you doing is just creating a background. And she gave a few steps in the manual to help us out. And what she says is that go ahead and take a marker and draw a line from one end to the other. So I'm gonna grab a marker and I'm gonna draw a line from one end to the other. So I'm gonna go from left and I'm gonna go to right. And then it says to draw a line from any edge to any other edge. So I'm gonna start with an edge and I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line over to the other edge. The next thing it says to do is to make a curvy line or a squiggle line. And so I'm going to squiggle a line. And then finally, it talks about making uh, one large circle and one small circle. So let's go ahead and make a large circle. And then I'm going to make a really small circle. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're then going to start coloring in our background, just like we did um, with what well, I did with the fish. So we're gonna take our cling, I'm gonna lay it over, and we're gonna do the same thing now, but you remember how those kiddos took apart, took out three colors that they were not using, three or four that they were not gonna use on their actual picture? So that's what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna take those colors that we didn't use, and we're gonna take the time, and they're gonna go ahead and color. These are larger sections, right? So what they can do if they want to is they can split them up. They don't have to have it all. I, this is one huge section that's one color, but let's say they don't want just one color. They can choose to break it in half and make one side one color and one side another color, or they can choose to color the whole thing a light blue. They're gonna take the time to do this, and then again, they've got that few minutes of wait time before they're gonna flip it over. Make sure you remind them to, yeah, it's a big section. We wanna make sure that we're coloring it all. No white spots. Take your time, there's no reason to rush. Uh, for the olders, we were just working on step two where we were creating that background, right? And then we were going to color. We're going to wait a few minutes, flip it over, and color the other side. And look, that's exactly what happened here. So it is now colored on both sides, and we're ready for the next step. Let me show you where we are in the three through five book, and then I'll bring back the K through two. Okay, this is what we did. I'm going to flip it over. We completed this, we're now gonna be at step three. Step three is gonna be really fun for them. It's going to be using the puff paint. Um, it's gonna not be as so much fun for the K through second grade teachers, um, but the kids are gonna have a blast with it. Okay, now there's a couple little tips that we have for you. Um, and the one thing I have to say about Moxie Box is they think about teachers a lot. So if you notice when we started with the markers, um, the original markers they were looking at had like the you know, package where you have to peel off the cardboard or stab it with a pencil to try to get it open. No, that would take a while for the kids so that they found the boxes that just is a flip lid. 
same with this. I loved this about what they found um, because I was all over the stress the other night. The puff of paint that I usually get from school has that um, plastic on it that you have to try to find and peel off. And I'm like, oh my gosh, to do that for 26 kids is going to drive you guys bonkers. No, they found the kind that does not have that. And all they have to do is twist it off. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So you're going to use the puff paint now so the kids can go ahead and take it out of the bag. They can throw the bag away. They're keeping their puff paint. And the puff paint's going to remain in their box when they're done. Okay, so let's take a peek then at the little guys. The little guys were here. We finished our coloring on both sides, right? And we let it dry overnight. Well, this is the key for, I don't care what grade you're in, let's think this through. Is using the puff paint, we're gonna want this to dry overnight. So maybe you can manipulate your schedule to have this session in the afternoon, no matter what grade you are, so that it can stay on their desk overnight and dry, right? No chances of being, you know, smashed, ruined, or spread. So we all need to practice with the puff paint, right? I had a practice with the puff paint and the littles are gonna have to practice and so are the older ones. So let's bring in some other curricular area to do this. So for the littles, let's have them go ahead and make a sight word. I'm gonna write a sight word for the real littles like the TKers, maybe the letter M, one of the first ones they learn and maybe the number three. For the olders, we could use anything. We can use a vocab word. We can use part of a sentence. We can use anything that you're working on an adverb, whatever you're working on in class, pull it in. So let's choose reflection, which is going to be one of our science um, vocab words as we study sunlight. Okay, then they're gonna take their puff paint and they're gonna start practicing. They might not need to practice all those letters but they're gonna practice until they feel comfortable. So let's go ahead and have them trace. You know, I'm not very comfortable with that yet. Look at how thick that was. I have to learn. Okay, I'm feeling better and I can stop there. I'm ready to actually do my final, my project, my practice project. It's not my final project. The littles have less to do, right? Okay. So now what we need to do is we save the template and then we save the template in our box. So they're gonna pull that template back out and they're gonna pull their cling. They're gonna lay it back over their shape exactly how it was. Now they're gonna get a little bit frustrated with this because they're gonna be all over with it. That's okay if they need help, what do they do? Right, they ask three before me. Okay, we're gonna flip it around. And you can show them, you can say, oh my gosh, I get really frustrated. I can't figure this out, Mrs. Warner. I can't figure it out. Well, let's just keep turning it until we can find it. Okay, and there they have it, right? You're gonna do the same thing with the older students. You're gonna get their template back and they're gonna do their fish. Well, I did the fish, remember? So they're gonna do their fish first, but then they also need that scrap paper um, for the background. So they're gonna lay their fish back on there and they're gonna do the same thing. Now, one hint, when you're using the puff paint, you wanna start from the middle and then move outward because if you go from the outward inward, they're gonna be smearing it and we don't wanna do that. The other thing that you wanna do is just like how they do coloring a lot when they're shading things in, they also can move their paper around, right? so that they can do different sides of it um, and it's more comfortable than trying to keep your arm over. And so they can start from the middle and move out. Okay, so now that we practice with the puff paint, it's time to do our real design. So let's go back to where we had put that tape along the edge of the table over there and let's call them up to, by table group to tape down the cling, okay? Make sure you show them a model for them that you want to tape on the paper. So not on, not on the mat, but on the actual paper. The reason for that is when they're going to be using puff paint, they're going to be turning the, uh, the design around so that they're not having to reach over and use the puff paint. 
okay? So that's why they don't want to tape it to the brown paper. Same thing with the older. The older, they really only need to have one piece of tape. They can tape it to the one end of the white paper, not the brown paper. So I started um, already with the older, and you can see that I started from the inside, and I'm gonna work my way out. And the reason for that is, again, not to smudge. We don't wanna smudge that puff paint. Okay, so we're gonna take our time. I would do the same thing with the littles. Have them come to the carpet if you have the space. Do yours, let them do an I do, you do kind of an idea. And so we're gonna go ahead and go from the inside out and add our outline of puff paint. One thing I do wanna remind the older students is this. So you're gonna finish the whole thing, right? You're gonna finish the whole, everywhere you see black is where your puff paint's gonna go. With the big kids, the one thing I do want to talk about is the background. All right. So the background for the older. So now that we finished, and I, and I want you to see the fish completely finished, okay? Once I complete the fish part of it, then we're gonna go back and do the background part, okay? So you can see that now it's completely done. The fish, the fish is completely done, so my object is done. Now it's time to do the background. Before we do that, your best bet is to wait overnight. So they're not moving it and they're not untaping it while it is still wet, okay? So let's pretend for me that it's dry. They're gonna take their background and they're gonna go ahead and lay it back on top. Okay, and then you can see that now we have the opportunity to go ahead and use the puff paint along the background that we created. So one thing I wanna to talk to, um, or want you to have a uh, talk with the kids about before they get started. Show them on your example, look, my background goes into my object, right? And But I don't wanna disturb my object. I want my fish or whatever object they have um, to be exactly as it is now. So you can see that with my design that I made on my background, I've got lines going through my object. I've got part of this circle here. I've got part of a circle there. Just tell them that their object stays as is, okay? No more puff paint inside that object. They're just gonna be doing um, the outline. So for example, for the circle here, I'm not going inside. I am just doing the outside of it. Okay, for this line here, I'm just going to do what's on the outside of my fish. I'm not going to go through my fish. I don't want to mess with my fish design. Okay. All right, now they're going to finish this. So once that's done, I want to show you um, where we are in the manual and how close you are to finishing this practice session. We are on step two. We just completed that, right? We just completed the puff paint part um, and that part is all done. Same with the olders. We went ahead and we completed the step three with the olders and we're now completely done. So flipping the page for the olders now, we're here and we're on our bonus project or what I call their original project. Same thing, showed you that we finished step two. We're letting our paint dry overnight, right? And then um, they have the option, let me move this down for you guys. They have the option here to, um, once it's dry, to cut it out. I just wanted to show you before I moved on to step three something. I made a sample, because my puff paint's not dry yet. And so I made a sample for you because I wanted you to see how simple it really is, even for those, you know, kinders to cut out. Now, for maybe TK, the teacher might have to do it, or it's a nice take-home project for a parent to do, right? But I wanted to show you, even with, oh, up higher, they're telling me up higher. <laughs> even with um, the scissors that the kids use at school, right? They're not pointy. 
um, it still is fairly easy to cut, although I'm not showing you that it's easy right now. <laughs> okay, so it's really easy even with the simplest of scissors to cut. Okay, so they really shouldn't have a problem cutting out that object. The older is definitely no problem. And again, if they are struggling, hey, ask three before me. Okay, so going back now to step three. So what are we doing now, you must be wondering. That was long. Yeah, it was long. That's what I mean. Like what you just saw is a good two weeks of time, right? And that's what we want it to be, a good two weeks of time. Now it's exciting because now they were just completely successful with this project. And you get to tell them, hey, you guys, now we're on our own. We get to create a faux sun catcher that's all our idea. It's gonna come out of our imagination. It's gonna come out of our brains. So this is what we wanna do. We wanna brainstorm some great ideas, okay? So let's go ahead and go over to the carpet and we're gonna list some great ideas of what our favorite things are and make a sun catcher that's our own. So that's gonna be in another se session, teachers, right? We're gonna go back to step one and step two, basically. So step three and step four basically mimic one and two, except it's their original, okay? So the first step when, you go, when you're going into week three like this is going to be to sit down and really brainstorm things that they want. You know, maybe it's a shape, but maybe it's a favorite animal, right? Maybe it's gonna be a gift for their mom or their dad or a birthday coming up or grandma, nana, papa. Maybe it's actually gonna be a gift. Maybe they're thinking, hey, I'm gonna get started on even like a Christmas gift, so sun catcher. Well, what is Nana like? Let me do some of her favorite things. And so you can help them by generating a list on the board to brainstorm um, some ideas with them, okay? So that's really what step three is going to be all about. It's gonna be coming up with something that they wanna do, a favorite insect, right? Um, they can do just about anything, but if they're going to use the exact same process of what you did. I still will say this, that Moxie Box is intended to be a directed lesson. So even though um, they have completed one whole project on their own, I would still um, you know, be that role model for them and doing one along with them, okay? But you have enough material in the box to um, use it and make another, um, of course. So let's take a look real quick on what we're doing then. So here we have um, step three. We, I just showed you this is step four um, with the littles. And then we, we go into um, Moxie University. But let's look at the older ones. The older, here we have our brainstorming part because we're going into now making our own design. And then we have um, Moxie U. Okay, so basically at this point, you've got the last two weeks of the month for them to create their very own sun catcher that becomes their, their own idea. All right, now I'm gonna segue really quickly over to um, how the Moxie U can be used and how we can make this whole um, Moxie Box program into some sort of a thematic purpose as well. So when I was thinking about, well, how can I use stained glass, you know, in my classroom um, with many different ideas and moving into maybe ELA or maybe writing or science, social studies, math, even math, like, is that even possible? Well, it is possible. So let's talk about, first of all, the K2 or TK through two. So for math, Graphing, of course, graphing and, and um, tallying is one of the common core standards that we use. So they could be graphing, they could be tallying. How many colors did you use in your object? And it could be, you could do this twice a month. You can do this with the object that they created as the sample, the practice, and then they can do it again and do another graph at the end with their, the, the one that they made by themselves. But you can teach them the tally marks and you can make a graph using how many colors did they use or how many times did they use certain colors. Um, you can also do a graph on how many different sections they have in their sun catcher and make tally marks with those. For science, come on science, I love the whole idea of science. So Brain Pop Junior um, Light is a really good one to start with on the study of light. 
Also, for the littles, they do study light, and that is one of the NGSS standards. And so one of the things that I've done in the past, um, actually, and I, and I had, did not have this Moxie box, or, but I wish I did to actually incorporate it into a science. But this is something that we've done in the past um, in science, and it's study, the study of um, the, three, um, the three different light. So translucent, transparent, and opaque. And that is actually in that Brain Pop Jr. Um, video that I found. And Amanda and Jim have that link with them that they can share along. So what they would do is they would take a flashlight and they're holding up materials. And they're going to see and they're going to tell you, okay, did the bubble packing material let the light shine through? Was it translucent? Was it opaque? Or was it transparent? And they're going to check off what it was. They can try. There's so many of these on TPT. One of our favorite spots, right, is TPT. So there's so many different um, objects that they have on TPT. And the graph is already done for you. Um, you may not have all this, but you might have some other things like tinfoil and, and things like that that they can do. So that's a science idea for the littles. For spelling, um, they can practice like we did with the painting, with the puffy paint, but that doesn't have to stop there. You can have that as a center where they're working on their 10 spelling words, and they can go ahead and practice those um, spelling words with the puff paint. For writing, how to make a sun catcher. We have to do how-to writing. In first grade, informational writing, what are the three forms of light? We have to do informational um, writing in first and second. We can also do a narrative, which is uh, encompasses all grade levels, which is art was fun and explain why this lesson was so fun. And then the last thing for TK through second that might be a lot of fun is to take them outside and have them practice their gross motor sp skills by using a sun a yellow ball, yellow beach ball, um, and playing catch using the sun. Now for three through five, more in depth, they're more in depth with um, thematic teaching. So for three through five, for the math, well, we did a big background with their project. And so um, they could be working on angles and intersections and protractors, even with the puff paint, right? For social studies, you can incorporate social studies, science, ELA, writing, Oh, come on, a lot of times that gets rolled into one anyway, doesn't it? And so they can be studying the stained glass. They can um, have histories of the stories of the stained glass. And they can study the Middle Ages um, and then even missions. And, you know, one of the things that they're going to find out in their study, which I think is really fascinating, it's in Moxie U2. Um, so, you know, maybe reading through that with them would be good as well. But how some of these stained glass stories, how it actually happened was that way back then, um, they really didn't read. And so they read through story. And then for science, um, how sunlight travels would be a really good study. Um, the study of the sun and the brightness of it and the size of it would be great. Um, the chemicals and how light travels. So lots of different ways um, that you can use MoxieBox and make it thematic and just make the things, you know, connect the dots with them, you know? And so, that's what I got for you today. I hope it was real. I hope it was helpful. Um, but thank you for letting me join you and um, working with Moxie Box. I hope you have a um, you know really fun time this month with it. And um, you know for your first month, uh, it's a practice one run all the way around, right? It's hard to do things fantastic the first time we do it, but I know you guys are going to do a great job. So enjoy the rest of your day. And again, thanks for having me.